and meet our statutory obligations. Waverley Local Planning Panel will be holding its meetings remotely using conferencing technology until further notice. Members of the public and applicants have been invited to listen to and or address the panel by teleconference. When necessary, the panel has individually undertaken inspections of items from the street and surrounding area. We have been provided with an assessment report prepared by council staff and, and they have answered questions from the panel. Today, we have people registered to address the panel. The order of speakers for each item will be firstly objectors and then those supporting the application, including the applicant or their representatives. Each speaker will be given three minutes. Any extension of time will be at my discretion as chair. The panel has been provided with copies of all the submissions received in response to the public exhibition of the application and forwarded a copy of any late correspondence. Therefore, there is no need for speakers to repeat all the points made in those submissions or what has been said by previous speakers. Please focus on the key points you wish us to understand and consider. The applicant may wish to address issues raised in the council's report, including the response to conditions and the issues raised by an objector. We may ask questions of the speakers to clarify our understanding of what is being said. We expect that each speaker will be heard in silence while they are addressing the panel and that courtesy and respect will be observed throughout this conference. I ask that everyone mutes their microphones unless they are called on to speak. After hearing from the speakers on all the items, the public meeting will be closed and the panel will then deliberate and make our decision. The minutes of the panel's decisions, including our reasons, will be available on Council's website as soon as possible after the public meeting. You should be aware that the panel meetings are recorded and audio recordings will be, will be uploaded to Council's website. Each member of the panel has been asked prior to the meeting to advise whether they have a conflict of interest to declare in relation to any of the items on the agenda. I can confirm that Sandra, Sandra Romfren has declared an interest in item three as she is a friend of one of the objectors. Ms Robinson will not take part in this item and no other conflicts of interest have been declared. Um, item seven, 115 Muraveri um, Road, North Bondi has been withdrawn. So the first item on the agenda, item one is one stroke for Cross Street Bronte, alterations and additions to um, unit one. Um, and we have no, people wishing to speak on that item. So we'll move to item two, which Sorry. is the Robin Hood. Now there is one item. One. Excuse um, me, hi. Yes, sorry. I'm the applicant for number one. Yeah, yeah, you're the applicant. So yes. you're, you're a chairman. Sorry about that. Yes. Yes. So what did you have to say? Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so uh, <clears throat> as you know, it's a block of unit, the only block of units uh, located on Cross Street, uh, Bronte. Uh, the block of unit is, uh, the zone is R2, so it's, uh, it's been built in 1930, so it's uh, part of the existing user. Right? Uh, my client, uh, since the, uh, um, was some work done to the building. Each unit uh, modified, uh, did some extension, like the unit at the back extends to the top. And my client uh, got the front yard as part of uh, exclu uh, exclusive use as part of the unit. Since this uh, modification, uh, my client wanted to adapt the layout of the unit to have uh, to maximize the use of the front yard. Um, as if you look at the existing plan, uh, the kitchen and the bedroom uh, is at the back and there is a small bedroom and the living room at the front. And time to create a bit of more of an open space facing, uh, facing the back. So we suggested to remove some uh, walls and to have a better circulation, we wanted to ask council just to extend push the front bit of uh, between the existing two doors to the front yard, uh, have an extension of uh, 0.6 meters out 
and uh, the length of uh, six meter. By doing that, we create a much better uh, use of the unit itself. Now, um, the, to keep it uh, uh, as visible, less visible as possible, we kept it as uh, only to 2.4 meter height and, uh, and made sure that uh, we're not going further than the eaves of the roof um, as an extension. Uh, the, the, as you can see, the recommendation from council is for fusel uh, based on the fact that uh, a, a bill, um, FSR, uh, front, uh, building front line, and the uh, private open space. So um, I wanted to comment on these three points that the uh, FSR uh, should, uh, it's only 4.6 meters that we asking for uh, addition to the thing. Now that there is, the building is uh, over the FSR at 0.7 and, uh, but this point, uh, the additional FSR is split between five, five residents of the block of units. Uh, and there is a other example, as I just looked before the meeting at number 10, for example, that is a private house that have FSR of 0.7, like as, as a private house. So just to put in context the, the difference between the, the two requests. The other point is, is that the, the, the town planner uh, said that the, the, the length of a, um, the setback, he measured the setback of the private open space from the inside of the existing wall of the, of the, <clears throat> of the front I'll line. just interrupt you, sorry, because um, you're going over time. Oh, um, so you, you, have you got much more to say? Do you need no, me to No, 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 much, not at all, not at all. I'm about to, to be done. All right, what so I'm, I'm asking is, is that uh, it's the first time I came across that the uh, measurement of, uh, of an area is done to the existing fence line and not to the boundary. Because if we measure into the boundary, we are, uh, we are over the three meter that require for a private open space. And we are at the 25 square meter that require uh, for, for the same reason. Um, and that's it, the, 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 the whole uh, position, the whole uh, extension is very, it's uh, hardly visible from the street. And it's a, it's a very minimal, it's only to allow the better circulation and the better use of the existing. That's All right, I'll just see if any of the panel members have any questions. Are there any questions? Um, I just have one, Chair. Um, yes. Mr. Chairman, one of the issues in the assessment report is about the design and materials, concern about that. Um, yeah. You're the architect? I am. Um, is there anything you would like to respond? Yes, to? I, 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 I do agree with that. I'm, I'm like overseeing on my behalf. I'll be more than happy to change the, the windows. I think the windows is the main issue uh, that have a, a problem. And I, I would like to change them to a more suitable and have them as a timber doors to match the existing. The other point is the roof is a little bit of a problem because I'm trying to keep the extension as small as possible. And so the only material I can use is a metal roof. If I'll use the same material as the existing roof, it will need to be a roof tiles. And, and then the slope of the roof will be completely different. So I'm, I'm, if, if it's a condition, I'm happy to do it, but I try to just keep it as small as possible. And uh, the other reason for the material of the, the steel frame that I'm proposing is just that I saw down the street on the, I think it's number 10, that they have the garage that's sitting on the boundary made of the same material. So I thought looking at the street uh, overall feel, it made sense to use something similar. And I believe that it will uh, match with the existing building. But I, I agree that the window should be of, of uh, uh, timber doors. All right. Any other questions from the panel members? I think structurally right. there would need to be some solution to support the brickwork above. I think you've got one steel column in the middle. Um, 
you'd have to have a structural engineer to resolve how you're going to widen this opening to the extent that you've shown. That may impact on the height of your opening. With them. I do have a structural engineer before the, the strata allow a uh, approve, uh, allow us to uh, lodge this uh, DA, we needed to get a structural engineer input and certificate. So it's all done and everything that is in the drawing, it's based on the structural engineer input. I can forward you the information right now. All right. Um, I just found the drawings that we've got. It's very hard to see where the new glazing line actually is. Um, it's not um, very clear. Uh, um, so is the glazing right at the outside of your extension of 600 millimeters? Uh, at, the, at the inside face of the wall, yes, yes. Uh, I'd say like it's probably another, if they, I did the wall is about 150, the sliding door will be about 100. So they're sitting with the uh, inside face of the, of the of the glass. The 600 is the overall from, from the, to the outside skin of the, of the addition. So the measurement is to the inside of it. So it's about 150 mil inside from this point. So, sorry, um, you're saying that the new, um, the footprint extension for the um, internal floor area is actually 600 from the outside skin? Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. that's not very Rosalind. clear. Rosalind, uh, I yeah. think if you look at the dimension on the floor plan, it shows that the, in, in all the elevation. That yes, I can see that, but I can't see any doors or windows. Well, you're looking at, uh, is it DA um, 1002? Is that the one? Yes, at? yes, which is showing shaded in red. Yes. So you're, but it's not really showing where the doors are. So is the, the very light ghosted, um, is that meant to be indicative of the doors or? or? Uh, no, okay, so uh, do you see like three lines uh, on the top of the page, just one next to the other, when the one closest to the north side is the fixed one and the three sliding doors uh, slide behind it. So it's two, it's two panels of doors, three on each side from the center. Uh, yeah. I think it's very, very clear on our drawing. Um, yeah. Uh, Roz, Lynn. So if you, if you look at um, the section and elevations page in section, you can see where the door is. Um, right. So it's right um, with no protection. It's right on the outside. That's right. It, it, it appears to be the head of the sliding window or doors is fixed to what's described as exposed steel frame charcoal pellet. Okay, got it. Thank you. So that was on drawing DA 2001, is it? Is that the section? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So any other questions of the architect? No. All right, thank you. That concludes item one. Uh, item two is for the Robin Hood Hotel. Um, and we have um, the um, representatives for the applicant, um, Stephen Gouge, the planner, and Dan Whitten, the applicant, um, available for questions. Did you uh, wish to be uh, speaking together or? Um, I'll let Stephen introduce the item if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Chair and panel members. Go um, ahead. We didn't, we didn't have um, much to, to say other than that we support the recommendation of the, um, of the planners. Um, obviously, we've reviewed um, and been part of the late correspondence, which I understand went to the panel this morning with the amendments to a number of conditions. Um, that's been discussed with Council and, and we, um, we agree with that. Um, and I guess unless there's any other questions, uh, we're happy, happy to, uh, to save time. All right, so you're referring to late correspondence that came to um, in yesterday and was ordered this morning and distributed to the panel and it was dealing with um, conditions? That's from correct, yeah. There were, I think, 
sort of three, three or four conditions in total, 39, 55 and condition 66. And they're on the, that's on the basis that there were um, conditions of consent in the previous approval that have been transferred into this consent and making sure that the wording is um, the that, same. Because that's correct, yeah. So the, the, the content of those amendments to the conditions was really to ensure that the conditions remain the same as the existing approval. So that when, when they're um, as required by one of the conditions in the proposal, when that, when that is surrendered, um, the existing operations can continue. And so the proposed changes that council has done in response to your memo, you're happy with those? Yes, that's correct. That's, that's correct. All right, so any questions from the panel? No. No, it's quite clear, thank you. All right, thank you. That concludes item two. Item Thank three um, is nine to 11 Andrews Avenue, Bondi. Um, this is the item that Sandra Robinson has a conflict of interest in, so she's now leaving the meeting. And we have a number of objectors. The first objector is Canna Campbell and Thomas Simpson of 29 Dudley Street, Bondi. Are you ready? You ready to speak? Who, who's, who are you speaking to? Sorry, is that Canna Campbell and uh, Thomas Simpson? No. Right. So I don't got... think they've joined the meeting, Annalise. All right, well, we'll move on to uh, James Dan. Uh, thank you, Chair, and hello, panel. Um, I won't take too much of your time today. Um, we'd just like to thank the council staff for making a proper assessment of the application. And we respectfully ask the panel uphold the recommendation to refuse the application. Um, just to be clear where we're coming from, the, our issue is not that the site is proposed for development. Our issue is the proposed development is way out of proportion with what the planning controls deem appropriate for the subject site and we'd ask that the LEP is enforced correctly in this case. The assessment report very clearly sets out a number of reasons why the proposed development is simply too big on the available land, not least of which is the proposed FSR is roughly 60% greater than what the LEP allows for the site. Seven Andrews Avenue is located immediately next door to the west of the subject site. The proposed development severely impacts on the amenity that Seven Andrews Avenue currently enjoys and should continue to enjoy if the FSR controls in the LEP are properly administered. The significant loss of views, overshadowing, loss of private space for seven Andrews Avenue and, and the other Andrews Avenue properties that would occur if the proposed development was to proceed should all be avoided if the proposal complied with the LEP. The FSR and minimum lot sizes in the LEP are in place largely to protect against exactly this form of overdevelopment. It's clear from the report that council staff have formed the same view and we therefore again respectfully ask the panel endorse the recommendation to refuse this application. Thanks. Thank you. The next uh, speaker is Mr. John Men Menia Meniha, if you're there. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, look, um, I fully support the comments of James Dan, the previous speaker, and thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm a resident of 23 Dudley Street, and I've spoken to the Dudley Street residents impacted by this proposal. And we've had a number of meetings to assess the impact on our daily lives and to assess the development's compliance with the Council's planning controls. The proposal has also been discussed with other residents of Dudley Street and um, who are also watching this proposal with interest. Um, as in our minds, it sets a precedent for this time in 2020 as to what is acceptable in planning terms and the degree to which the significant and permanent impact on our lived experience in our homes is compromised uh, by this development. To be clear, we understand the need for development in order to accommodate the aims of the Waverley LEP. It's the foundation of the unacceptable impact of this proposal mainly arises from its failure to comply with the FSR controls. As a result, the proposal leads to an inappropriately proportioned development on the site, we feel. 
Um, we feel that the, the loss of amenity detail in our submissions and indeed in the local planning panel's report arises mainly from this failure to apply the FSR controls. Um, and we, th we thank the Council's Development and Building Unit for its report and its comprehensive analysis of the failures in the proposal to comply with the LEP controls. Uh, we strongly support the finding. We also strongly encourage the local planning panel to accept the recommendations from the uh, DBU, as we feel it comprehensively uh, captures our core concerns. Uh, to summarise, the inappropriate height, scale and, and bulk of the proposal within the current social community and, and built landscape context are already well exposed by the submissions, as is the loss of privacy, overshadowing and the physical domination of the proposal over the adjoining homes and indeed within the landscape. Um, look, in our view, we're just amateurs, we're just residents, but, you know, the extensive uh, community, as I've spoken to them, uh, impacted by this proposal, we figure that it doesn't really pass the pub test, eh, quite apart from not passing the, uh, the LEP controls. It doesn't meet the core aim of the LEP 2012 to promote uses that service the local and wider community, which is a quote. Indeed, for us, the proposal erodes the amenity of our local and wider community. And so we strongly encourage the panel to accept the um, the contents of both our submissions and the, uh, the, the planning committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll just see if there's any questions from the panel members. Any questions? No? All right, the next speaker is Mr. Harry Nicholas. Okay. Hi guys, how are you going? You guys can hear me all right? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, we're just from 5 Andrews Avenue here in Bondi. Now we're on the higher points of this, uh, the subject development. Now our only issues are mainly what pretty much everyone else has said, which we won't repeat. But our main concern here is our views from our, our balconies from the top, um, the bulkiness of the property, and also I believe the height of the actual building looking at the DCP and all that other stuff uh, in regards to height limits and all that, uh, you know. Um, we received, I've noticed that it's gone over another five metres to what we're meant to be approving. Um, but other than that, we do wish these guys uh, all the best. I just, we've taken on the, uh, the uh, you know, just those, the points that we've mentioned in the, uh, on the uh, email that we sent on board. That's that's our main concern, really, just the views, just privacy and all that other stuff. All right, thank you. No worries. Uh, any, any questions from the panel members? No. No? All right. We now have uh, Mr. Anthony Betros on behalf of the applicant. Just unmuting. Uh, thank you, panel, for the opportunity to speak before you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. I uh, speak today requesting deferral of the application. Um, I'd just like to um, point out a couple of things uh, which we feel um, should support deferral. Um, the semi-detached dwellings are permissible in the zone, in the R3 zone. The FSR quoted in the report has therefore been applicable applies to dwelling houses and dual occupancies. Uh, given we're proposing semi-detached dwellings with Torrens Title Subdivision, the FSR 0.9 applies, or if you use the um, um, criteria under 4.4a, we would still comply as well. Um, notwithstanding that, we are willing to discuss a significant reduction in height, bulk and scale with council um, we have attempted to contact council by phone and an email on numerous occasions and the only response we got was the reports done and no further um, correspondence will be entered into. Um, the, so given that it's compliant, it was below the height limit and below the FSR and complied with the setbacks and landscaping, we didn't feel it was too unreasonable but always willing to discuss. If I could just take you to uh, page 112 of your bundle or your um, business paper. Yes. That's the um, photo montage. Yeah. 
Do you have that before you? Yes. Yeah. You can see the effects of the fourth floor, which is, I think, something that we could investigate removing. And as you can see from that, if you were to remove that fourth floor, you would then end up with the car park level, the bedroom level and living level. And I think it would then provide a reasonable um, relationship with the neighbours to the west along Dudley Street and also improve the relationship with the neighbours to Dudley Street to the west. Um, we haven't had any opportunity to discuss any aspect of variation or consideration. And I think that is something we can uh, definitely look at uh, doing as well as scaling it back from the rear um, at the upper level. And I think each of those issues would address uh, some of the concerns that have been raised. Um, we knew there were objections, but again, we haven't had an opportunity to respond to those objections or to amend to respond to those objections. Um, so really just asking that the panel, uh, particularly in these times where we don't wanna to have to go to court and wait for a February section 34, it would just be a complete waste of time and money for both parties in my opinion. Um, I think, again, given that we can provide something that would fit in without too many um, changes to the form, oh, sorry, not the character of the development and in that being semi-detached dwellings, but we can certainly address the form um, in a reasonable manner. Um, have for answer any questions. So just to understand what you're proposing that you would investigate, you're saying you would get rid of the top floor you mentioned also that you'd look at um, increasing the rear setback. So is that looking at things, if you go to DA08, the section, are you saying yes. you'd look at reducing the size of the lounge room and the ensuite, master ensuite and bringing that back? Is that what Correct. you're saying? I was actually going to take you straight to that page. Thank you, 121. Um, you can see the existing house dotted there in red on the section. Yeah. Yes. Um, so what I was contemplating was the removal of the fourth floor, the top level, which has study, terrace and avoid area. Yeah. Then the lounge room on the third floor would be pulled back. So it was read as two storeys, not much higher than the um, existing dotted form, as you can see, and then pulling that back. And that would be subject to, you know, checking out view lines and shadow impacts, et cetera. And in relation to the um, lot size, you haven't mentioned that. So did you wish to say anything about the non-compliance of the lot size? Thank you. Um, on the page 82, which is a picture of the, of the semis at the moment or the house at the moment. What page, sorry? Uh, 82, thank you. Yes. Uh, you'll note the two gates, the entry gates and the two front doors. So it actually has existed as nine and 11 Andrews Avenue for a significant period. And it was only that the owner owned both properties and to the previous owner, I should say, um, in, a, in an effort to reduce land tax, consolidated the allotments. But it's always effectively functioned as two dwellings and as, as you can see, presents as two dwellings. Um, the council, subdivision um, objective as well, seeks to reinforce the existing subdivision pattern. And we did provide a pretty detailed analysis showing that that would be achieved by this development because it would be consistent with all the lots to the immediate west and, and further beyond in the area. And we provided a, a detailed table of that. And you can see that in fact on page 81 of the, um, which is just the um, lots, lot diagram there. So what's been proposed more or less is two semi-detached dwellings, which I think is a, um, an appropriate mediate between residential flat buildings encouraged by the R3 zone, which we're in. The R3 zone has a height of 12 and a half and an FSR of 0.9 would be well below those aspects. And I think then provide an appropriate type of development being semis rather than say a boarding house, multi-unit housing or a residential flat building. And I understand a flat building would have a greater step back but multi-unit housing would actually require the same 1.5 setback with a 12 and a half metre height. So I think what could be done readily um, by amendments 
um, I don't think, and it can be re-notified, of course, um, would not um, prejudice the neighbours or council anyway, but I think it would be uh, reasonable in the circumstances. Right. Um, do any of the panel members have any have questions of Mr. Betros? Um, I, I do. Um, yes. Your comment about the potential to reduce the extent of the rear section of level, the second floor level, which would be the lounge room. How much were you suggesting? I'd, I'd probably look at at least two to three metres, but that would be governed by the impact on the number seven's windows. I don't know that that actually affects their view in that regard. Um, it was difficult to ascertain because that window is quite low. It's only at a first, at a ground or slightly raised ground floor level. And I think the uh, gentleman number five also had some elevated terraces higher up that would potentially look out and across the proposal. Right. So I expect it would read as a two and a half story or two and, two and a third, two and two thirds sort of scale development if you look at the section again on. Sure, um, in, in, in doing that, would you anticipate that, and this is not an implied criticism at all, sorry, but that the floor plan might readjust itself in, in, yes. internally? Yes, we would have to look at that, of course, yes. Yeah, okay, I can understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I guess really, as Richard suggested, if you'd have to make some modifications internally, it would depend on the extent of that as to whether this is the same application if it was being deferred. Uh, can, I, can I respond to that? Yes, yes. Um, well, the fourth floor is a office bedroom and an outdoor terrace. Um, removing that would still retain it as two semi-detached dwellings. Um, and if the lounge room was reduced, uh, I don't think it changes the character or um, categorisation of the development. Um, so in, in my opinion, I don't think that um, prejudices or changes anything. I think the lounge room is the easy bit, but the bedroom, um, Master Oswald, you were suggesting that the lounge room only be set back and not the master bedroom as well, because that would compromise the planning, pushing that in. Well, that's that's on the um, first floor, which is well below a wall height. And as you can see, it's consistent with the rear elevation, sorry, the rear setback of the adjoining property at number seven. On, I'm on plan 117. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Um, okay. If it pulled in slightly, or we, we could look at that as well. Uh, but sorry, again, sorry. I don't. You're just, looking at, you're just looking at reducing the lounge and not the bedroom. Correct. Unless the master suite was considered that it protruded. I mean, I don't think it protrudes very far past number seven. And, and again, if that had to step in slightly to promote an angle of view. Um, or reduce shattering, I don't think that would compromise the layout to the extent that it'd be a new DA. No more, for, no more questions. Thank you. And Mr. Betros, if the panel were to um, agree to your request for deferral, what time frame would you be looking at to do amended plans by? Uh, without discussing with the architect, I would say two to three weeks would be um, an adequate period. We've already discussed amendments as well, so it's not um, since we received the report last week. So I think that would be a reasonable period. And what's the advantage of doing it um, as a deferral as opposed to it being um, potentially a refusal and you coming back with a um, 8.2 review? Well, obviously that would be some time saving. Um, we would not. We would also prefer that if we, if council were of a mind to um, refuse the application, I would request the opportunity that on behalf of the applicant who is listening to withdraw it instead so that it would be no refusal um, against the site. But I think I don't think a deferral is unreasonable in that we haven't been given one opportunity to amend. I don't know of any development application that goes through as per lodgement. Um, all are given an opportunity to amend or provide further information and all we're doing is consistent with that approach. Um, so it would be a time and cost saving in my opinion. Okay, so 
in order of preference, it's deferral, or presumably it's approval, deferral, um, withdrawal, refusal. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think uh, approval. <laughs> All right, any other questions from the panel members? All right, so that concludes that matter. Thank you. And um, so the next item is um, Unit 562 Fletcher Street. And we have uh, the applicant registered to speak, or the applicant's representative um, from McGregor Westlake, Peter McGregor, sorry. If you're there. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Thank you. Your time starts now. Okay. Um, thank you. The revised plans address the relatively minor reason for the previous refusal, which was based on the privacy concerns to the lower bedroom. We have added a note, read the inclusion of treated glass and curtains for this new bedroom. Uh, and I, I guess in some way we're happy with the, the uh, conditions that have been part of the approval. Uh, in, in, we would just like to reiterate that it's an efficient use of a subfloor space for increased occupancy in a highly desired location. It does create a two bed family option in an otherwise typically one bedroom professional market. We have had an engineer re review the sub story uh, and write a cover letter with the viability of, of the project. Uh, I, I think that's all I, I need to say, really, if there's any questions. Any questions from the panel? No. No, not for me. No. All right. Thank you, Mr. McGregor. That concludes that item. Thanks very um, much. Thanks. The next matter is um, item 5, 310 Bondi Road, Bondi. And we have an objector, uh, Tony Robb from Evolution Planning. <laughs> There. And Elise, Tony is running late for the meeting, so he's not in the meeting. Okay, um, so do we want to move to item six, then go back to item five? Is the, does the panel agree with that? Yes, um, we can do that. Yeah. All right, we'll move to item six and go back to item five. Um, in a minute. Uh, for item six, uh, we have Mr. Robert Gallup uh, registered to speak as an objector. Yeah, hi. I'm here. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm a resident of uh, 120 Roscoe Street, which is directly behind um, the, uh, the proposed um, uh, application for an extension of the operating hours of the F45 gym. So my objection is based on the noise factor, um, which sort of um, interferes with the quality of life in um, my residence and the residents um, in the surrounding area. I see that we have only three objectors listed to the proposal, but the 122 who are four as has been pointed out by council, are all members of the gym who are not going to be directly affected by an extension of the hours, except for their enjoyment of um, the facilities. So it's not going to impact their lifestyle as it um, impacts the immediate residents. Did you wish to, is that, you finished now, Mr. Gallup? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, my objection, as I say, is based on the noise factor. I realised that the proposal is that the extended hours for a 5.15am opening time do not include amplified music, but I'd just like to reiterate that it's not so much the music which is the problem, it's the instructions emanating from the people running the exercise classes that cause the most, uh, cause the noise level to be um, 
interfering at least. So are you um, basing the, are you stating that that's what's happening now with the current operation, the current that's opening That's what's hour? happening now with a 6 a.m. start time, yes. The, the classes. So you're are saying at the moment you're already being disturbed by... Yeah, we're already being, um, and my colleague or my neighbour, Louisa, who is also, I think, listed to talk, she has audio recordings of, from her bedroom of... Um, of the uh, noise that emanates from the property as it stands. So yeah, right, that's, thank you. Uh, any other... So, are no, there any questions there. from the panel member? No. No, not for me. No. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gallup. The next speaker is Ms. Louisa Jackson. If you're there. Hi, I am. How are you? Good. Thanks. Um. Yeah, so just to reiterate what um, Rob was speaking about, I've actually, um, I can share my screen with you if you like. I've been in touch with um, F45 since the beginning of this year. Um, I moved into the property in late August and the noise was bad and it just got to the point in January where I couldn't take it anymore because it was actually waking me up. Um, so I live directly behind F45. So I started... Um, by emailing them. And I would say I have a good rapport with F45. I've got nothing against um, there being a studio there. It's just that the screaming and the music's too loud. And that was pre um, any DA being lodged to open earlier. So the noise does actually wake me up. Um, it's not as bad now, because obviously coronavirus and it's winter, so windows are shut more. Um, but there's some, there needs to be something done with the current setup before they could extend to a 5 a.m. start, in my opinion. Um, so I have got a recording if you'd like me to play it so you can see what I'm talking about. Does that help? Do the other panel members want it to be played? Um, how long is it? Uh, it is 12 seconds. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, play it. That's fine. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Can you see my screen here? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry, I'll just start that again. I, I, let me just turn this up. So this is just outside one of the bedrooms, which and uh, over here is where F45 is. So that might be hard to hear, but what I have done is I've sent um, the panel um, just our SMS text between myself and F45, the owner and one of the staff, the manager, as well as just like the emails that we exchanged starting back in January, which was before any um, DA was lodged, as well as the video link. Um, so yeah, the main issue is Rob said, it's just like, this, it's the screaming and it's the noise level. And um, I hadn't spoken to them about what they could do to get some insulation um, because we're not, no one's against them being there or exercising. In fact, I feel the opposite. I, it's just something needs to be done to contain that, that um, pretty, it's pretty dreadful waking up to someone screaming, put it that way. <laughs> so when the windows are closed, does that tend to um, make the impact? Or no, is it to, be honest, still not, to be honest, not that much, um, especially like in the front room. So I'm currently sat at the moment in the front room where this video was taken. It makes no difference really if the windows are closed or not because they're only single glazed and they're old sash windows. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Any questions from the panel members? No. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, uh, everyone. Thank you. So we have uh, Mr. Nick Fryer, um, on the, the applicant. Good afternoon, guys, and um, thank you for your time. Thanks, Rob and Louisa, for your um, submissions. and. I have taken them on board with uh, F45. So as an introduction, the F45 seeks an extension of the hours from um, 5.15 to 6 a.m. and 6.15 to 7 a.m. on Saturday. So firstly, I will um, respond to the three objections and then we can discuss the council's report. So to address the three objections, we have um, all come from Roscoe Street, which is situated at the rear of the premises. We've discussed extra noise minimization with our acoustic engineer and propose we build an internal 90 mil stud wall at the rear along the existing rear brick wall. This will be all internal to the premises, insulated with a CSR sound screen and a double layer of 13 mil uh, chip rock sound check. The above me measures uh, will have a performance rating of 55 RW 
And as an example, we've reduced 70 decibels of sound down to 36 decibels, just with this uh, measure. So plus the brick wall, um, it'd be an extra, extra, extra um, reduction. Uh, we would also install acoustic seals around the doors and windows, so to help the sound travel um, going to Roscoe Street. Moving on to the council's report, it speaks about how the premises can be su sufficiently acoustically treated, however states that the noise from patrons entering and leaving the premise um, cannot be contained. This we disagree with and we would enforce a very strict plan of management with our members and bar any members who have any disregard to our strict rules regarding entering and exiting the premises. It must be noted that this is not a bar or restaurant and F45 membership is at the upper end of membership fees of a training facility. Members of F45 range from doctors, police officers, nurses, students, architects, and, any, and a lot of other professionals in the community. As an extra measure, we would also install neighborhood awareness signage at the front of the premises, reminding our members to leave and arrive quietly. As part of our proposal, we note, and we note no acoustic system, music or PA be used during the uh, early hours. Um, and this was as per our application and acoustic report. It also must be noted that the health unit of council has stated that consideration could be given to a trial period being imposed, which we support. As a, as a precedent, a 24 hour trial has been previously approved by council in the Bondi Pacific building, which is less than 250 meters from the premises. We understand that this was in a basement, but we would still, but we would still have the members leaving and arriving at the gym, which seems one of the main reasons council has put a refusal recommendation to our proposal. Uh, lastly, for the foreseeable future, current restrictions to the industry due to COVID means that this is an opportune time for the trial period, as we would then provide more members access to our premises in a safe manner. Therefore, we seek a panel through a trial period of 12 months for the times put forward in our section 445 application. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you've got any questions, please let me know. Does the panel have any questions? Um, yes, I've got a few. Yes. Um, Mr. Fryer, um, a few questions. There was a comment about screaming being a, an issue. Um, is that screaming or yelling from the instructor or from the participants? It'd be, it'd be a combination of both, which would which would be, we, we could be addressed in our plan of management um, so that it, it can be um, minimised or reduced entirely. I mean, look, it's easy to, in F45 can tell their, their instructors not to yell, but if they have mm -hmm. a particularly vocal member, it's much more difficult to control, I would have thought. The, the, instructor, the, the instructors are the ones that are normally shouting and then the or, or instructing, but they do it in a high, you know, high intensity um, sort of way. So I can understand that that could travel, and that's an acute traveling uh, noise. So it would be something that would be heard quite clearly. The participants don't really yell back, but um, it, it is more the instructors that are the ones carrying out the 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 yeah. um, loud instructions. Um, and just two other questions. There was a comment in the report, um, the number of um, letters of support raised concerns about the number of people that might come at 5.15. Can you confirm mm -hmm. how many people there are in each class and how many classes 30. there would be at that? Is it just one extra class? It'd be one one extra class. Yeah. And a class, class size is uh, capped. So, there won't be 130 people coming to that really? class. The class, yeah, the class sizes are capped, um, and that's capped at 36. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. No, that's one question, please. Yes, yes. Um, could could the applicant? Would you just tell us again a bit more about the suggestion of an acoustic wall? Where is it located? Yep. Please? So if you pull up the plan, which is um, at the rear of the at the rear of the uh, the premises, yeah. um, where the, you've got currently the office WC, that outdoor and that glazing window, 
Yes. We would build a wall. We propose to build a wall across the whole entirety of the rear. So um, it'd be a 90 mil stud wall, sound installation, and then two layers of 13 mil sound check, which would um, dramatically reduce the noise travel through the, the openings, which are, you know, single glaze. That, that panel there would be a glazed, glazed, glazed panel, it's quite large. Yeah. There's a doorway there okay. and two more windows. Uh, so those... that, that's, uh, it's, it's at the rear. Um, Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Um, just with that extra work, um, F45 is obviously a tenant. How, how can the panel know that the owner would approve that work? I mean, they've approved it. You lodge in a, a application just to change the condition, but not to carry out any physical work. I understand. I understand. Thank you for the question. I think the the um, looking at the history of the tenancy and the works that have been carried out throughout the history of F forty five being there, we don't see the the, the the owners having any any objections to the work. Um, we're not going to demolish or touch any of the existing. We are just building a, a new wall partition in front of the existing internally in our tenancy. So it wouldn't be any different from us building another office or another um, another partition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the concern is that it doesn't more like your application at the moment and to put an addition on to that effect, um, it would be something that we would have no certainty of it being complied with in the sense that it would require your owner's, owner's consent. Um, just remind me, was an acoustic report submitted with your application as well? Yes. Or this has come up, but no, no, this no. further acoustic advice is... Report. Acoustic report was submitted. This was not um, a recommendation because we complied with um, the acoustic report found compliance, but since the objections have come through, we've re-engaged the acoustic engineer and um, he's. this is based off his recommendation. And was that further advice um, provided to council, the further acoustic advice? Uh, no, council didn't ask for it, and we haven't. We 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 based off this meeting, and we were told not to submit anything, and so I could talk about it. All right. Any other questions? No. No. Thank you. So. No worries. Um, thank you. Thank you. We'll go back to item five. Um, do we have Mr. Rob available now? Yes, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, please, yeah. ex please excuse my uh, lateness in joining the meeting. Um, right. I'm from Evolution Planning. I've been engaged by the, the um, owners corporation of the building um, next door, 312 um, um, Bondi. Um, I prepared a submission dated 24th of December. I'm sure that's all been circulated to you. Um, there's just a couple of matters I'd like to reiterate. Um, well, one new item is that um, I really don't feel that the, the, the issues that I've raised in my, what I thought was an extensive submission have been properly addressed in the, in the council report, um, which is basically a page um, responding to objector submissions. Um, and, and, and some of them, a number of the matters that I've raised have not been addressed, um, which leaves the question as to whether any consent that is granted could be open to challenge. Um, the, 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 the most significant issue that I raised though is, is basically regarding heritage. Um, I, I really think a, um, a picture tells a thousand words. And if you look at page 15 of, of my submission, which includes an extract from the DCP. Um, this, this particular extract here, that, that's what is um, identified as being unsympathetic additions in relation to the scale of an original dwelling now. Um, that's pretty much exactly what is happening um, with this application. If,
the, the, the whole um, argument in, in the, the, the council assessment seems to be that, um, that you know, there, there are improvements being made to the, 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 the heritage item and therefore some flexibility should be given to the, to the new building. But there's got to be some balance there. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can completely disregard this significant streetscape impact um, just because you're doing improvements to the heritage building. Um, the, the other justification is, is that there's a, adequate separation between the two buildings, i.e. the rear of the heritage building and the, and the street setback of the new building. Um, I, I completely disagree. The, the orientation of this site is that the, the, the rear of the site faces north. So th this new building will completely overshadow the private open space of, of the existing building. The, the, living, the living area of that dwelling is at the rear. So there'll, there'll be awful amenity as a result of this proposal. Um, you're going a bit over time, so how much longer do you think you'll need? Yeah, look, um, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to leave that there, um, Mr. Tour, um, but I'd just like to reiterate my submissions and, and that they haven't really been adequately addressed. Thank you. All right. Any questions from the panel members? No. All right. No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Thank you. And then we have Mr. Lee Cosnetto on behalf of the applicant. Afternoon panel, can you hear me? Jeff? Yes, we can hear you. Great, thank you very much. Um, we're grateful for the recommendation of the staff in this report um, and accepting of the assessment and all of the conditions that are listed in the recommendation. The proposal has the endorsement of council staff and importantly, the design excellence panel. The design excellence panel commended the application at their meeting and in their minutes, they made some minor suggestions for refinements to the design, all of which were included in an amended plan package to the council, which they have fully endorsed. Uh, this development provides a unique accommodate a small residential flat building in the yard. It is completely compliant with the FSR control and all relevant setback and building form controls. It's also compliant in practice with the height and it's subject. You're breaking up a bit, Mr. Cornetto. Um, it might, sorry, you're breaking up a bit. It might be um, um, best to keep us. Uh, uh, here uh, given the recommendation to approve the application, I didn't intend Mr. to. Mr. Cosnetta, you're breaking up. It might be better if you go off video and just do it with. Um, Sorry, are you there? You're breaking up. Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you now, but. Can you still it was hear just me now? Breaking, Great. Breaking up. Yeah, that, that seems um, better. Shall I start again? No, you're breaking up again. Um, Okay. Can you go off um, audio and just do it, um, go off video uh, just... with audio? Turn off your video. Yeah, so I'm off video at the moment. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Uh, Let's try that. You're there and you can hear me? Okay, great. So I understand the MBN has been installed this morning um, and it's not playing that nicely. Um, okay. In summary, I was accepting of the assessment of the application as written by the staff. Um, the proposal has the endorsement of staff and importantly, the design excellence panel. The panel in their meeting uh, made suggestions for minor refinements to the design, all of which were incorporated into an amended package, which has the endorsement of council. The development provides this unique opportunity to restore and conserve a heritage item and provide a small residential flat building in the backyard that's fully compliant with the FSR controls and all relevant building form controls. There is a in practice height standard breach. Um, it's a technical interpretation issue which the council officers agree 
is inconsequential. And given the recommendation, I hadn't intended on labouring on the credentials of the proposal, but it was going to be available for questions and to respond to any concerns from objections. Um, I wanted to um, address two of three of the matters raised by Mr. Rob um, in his submission. Firstly, I don't um, agree that there's any prospects of a challenge to the assessment of the application, which I find is detailed and deals with all relevant submissions and controls. Um, the image referred to in Mr. Rob's submission is from the DCP relative to heritage conservation areas and heritage items and is a drawing of a detached dwelling in Queen's Park. The drawing has the additions immediately on top of the existing roof and um, set back only a minor degree from the front of the building. Our proposal is to um, leave the roof and the whole building as it stands and to have a distinctly different building 26 metres back from the front boundary. Um, I believe that's sufficient separation between the two buildings to accentuate the heritage item. Um, the other issue raised was the overshadowing of the private open space for the unit that makes up the heritage building. That has an expansive private open space at the rear as well as the front of the site um, and fully complies with the requirement for solar access in accordance with the ADG. Um, they were the salient points I wanted to address. If there are any other questions from the panel, I'm happy to take them. Um, and I am in the architect's office if needed for any architectural questions as well. They are here. Any questions from the panel? Um, I was trying to answer the question myself, but I'm hoping Mr. Costnetta can clarify it. Um, the GFA calculations and the FSR calculations, they include the, the, floor, the floor space of the heritage item? Absolutely, yes. Um, and just to comment on your um, response to Mr. Rob, Mr. Rob, we are given all of the objections, so we've had an opportunity to read your objection directly. Um, you're probably on mute, but it's more just a comment rather than seeking a response. Any other questions? No. No. All right, thank you. Uh, so that concludes the public meeting. Um, the panel will, um, the meeting will now be closed and the panel will go into um, closed session to deliberate and uh, make decisions on the matters before it. And as I said before, the um, panel's decisions will be placed on the council's website as soon as possible. So I declare the meeting closed at 1.06. Thank you. Thank you.